Let's discuss. Alice, this afternoon we also got a statement from Donald Trump about Mitch McConnell saying, quote, Mitch McConnell does not speak for the Republican Party and does not represent the views of the vast majority of its voters. Is he right? Look, he also called McConnell old crow, which actually is pretty good bourbon. But I'll, I'll say this. Look, I think rational Republicans of the Republican Party view this uh, all the same way. They view that we had free and fair elections. They view that Donald Trump lost. They view January 6th as an insurrection. And it was not legitimate political discourse. I think the Republican Party, including Donald Trump, does a tremendous disservice when we are engaged in the circular firing squad and, and more focused on the big lie than opening up the big tent when we should be taking it to the Democrats. We should be taking it to them on their policies uh, with regard to the economy, with regard to inflation and sure. COVID and the border. But, but here's the thing. They're, they're more focused on going against Liz Cheney and Mitch McConnell. Our opponents are Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden. Okay. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but... And I'll, I'll bring it to you, Powers. Uh, the question is, <laughs> uh, the question is, who actually represents Republican Party voters these days? Is it Mitch McConnell or is it Donald Trump? Well, you know, I mean, she talked about rational Republicans. I, well, that's what I was going to say. What percentage of the Republican Party? A large Party? percentage of Republicans, unfortunately, do believe the big lie, right? So I think it's probably fair to say that rational people uh, don't believe that, but a lot of Republican voters do believe that. And so... Uh, I would actually argue that Donald Trump probably speaks a little bit more for the voters, um, at least the base of the party. But Mitch McConnell also represents the Republican Party, obviously. He's the leader in the Senate. And I think he clearly believes that it's time to move past Trump and that he doesn't want to pick fights with him. And what Alice just said, which is the Republican Party should be focused on attacking Joe Biden, not attacking each other. Yeah, Casey, a, a few weeks or months ago, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene said to Steve Bannon, that they represent the base of the Republican Party, that they're not fringe. They represent the base of the Republican Party. Here's Congresswoman uh, Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene uh, talking, uh, I think, earlier today. Not only do we have the D.C. jail, which is the D.C. gulag, but now we have Nancy Pelosi's gazpacho police spying on members of Congress, spying on the legislative work that we do, spying on our staff, and spying on American citizens that want to come talk to their representatives. This government has turned into something it was never... All right, never so that's enough of that, but I mean... I, I guess gazpacho. the gazpacho police. I assume she meant the Gestapo police. I do, too. Which is another reference that would be an offensive one that she makes inappropriately. Maybe she did it on purpose to Maybe, avoid well, said accusations. Uh, right. No, we, we, nobody can accuse her of using anti-Semitic tropes or Holocaust belittling tropes if no. she mm -hmm. uh, is referring to the gazpacho police. I guess she's belittling the Gestapo by calling them gazpacho. Who knows? By the way, in the San point. Francisco, they could very well have a gazpacho police, just as a separate <laughs> issue, if it's too warm. The, the... What are the import-export rules around gazpacho, I'm not, Tell I'm me. Not quite sure. I guess my question is, why are people siding with that? Like, you have a choice here. W what is the incentive structure where somebody would say, yeah, Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene's side of this, not Liz Cheney. That, I want to be on the gazpacho police side of this. I, you know, Jake, all I can say on that is that there are very few leaders in the Republican Party who've been willing to stand up and say what Liz Cheney has said, and instead Republicans are hearing from their news outlets, many of which are increasingly to the right of Fox News, and the information that they're consuming is telling them that this big lie is actually true, and they're choosing to believe it because you know, Trump has been, Donald Trump was particularly out there about saying, look, the reason I bash the media is so that when you write a story that's true, I can say plausibly you shouldn't believe them, and they won't. Uh, so I think that's a big part of it. But look, Mitch McConnell's comments were interesting to me for a couple of reasons. One, he has been someone who has stood on principle on January 6th. I will give him that. But he never does anything if it doesn't line up with his ambitions to retain power, both inside the Senate as the majority leader. And that means worrying about how his senators feel, but also worrying about how the electorate feels. And he knows that so long as Republicans are having this fight, are, and, and they are literally divided. They are divided into two different groups. There is the base of the party, the furthest of which are with, Mar with Marjorie Taylor Greene. And then there are a lot of people who are alienated from Donald Trump's party and who want an alternative. But he knows he's not going to win back the Senate majority if they're talking about this. If, if right. people are out there calling January 6th legitimate political discourse. If he's out there talking about inflation, he might win. So that's, I think, part of why he went out and, and, and did this. And I, I don't think we should lose sight of that. And that's, that talks about where the country is as a whole, 
as opposed to just the Republican Party itself. What's your take on this? On a more granular level, because I think you're hitting on a very important point right now, you have to look at who in his caucus also is up for re-election. When you have senators like Lisa Murkowski, who, who, who was just talking to you the other day about this, who yeah. is up for re-election, and she often is out of line with what Donald Trump says, and you want your senators and your caucus to trust you and get re-elected, her opponent is a Trump-endorsed Republican. So that's one thing that he may be taking into consideration. But when you asked what the incentive is, though, for people to take this argument, what wins in a House race is not the same as wins statewide a in a primary Senate. primary in a House. In a primary specific. in a House right. race or, or what wins statewide in a Senate race. Those are not the same argument. And so it may be beneficial for some House Republicans or Kevin McCarthy to take one side of this issue that does not make sense for a senator who's up for re-election who's a Republican or Senate candidate. Well, and, and speaking of primaries, there's also the factor that many are keeping in the back of their minds. They realize if they stick their head too far out of the foxhole, they are going to be knocked down by Donald Trump. So mark my word, after the filing deadlines in a lot of these states where people realize, hey, I don't have a primary opponent and Donald Trump cannot put one in against me, then we're going to see, I believe, a lot more people coming out saying, let's stop talking about the past and let's start talking about the future. And that's going to happen after these filing deadlines. I want to show something to you, Alice, just to, just some, to, just to make you feel better. Here is uh, <laughs> Alabama Governor Kay Ivey. She's up for re-election. And here's her new ad. Uh, and she takes on Joe Biden the way that you wanted to, in a creative way. Take a look. Growing up, my mom and dad told us, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Well, here's what I have to say about Joe Biden. Poor Joe. Bless his heart. As we say in the South, bless their heart. I thought you'd like that. I, I love and that. And also, no lies. No, no, no lies. No lies about the election. No lies about January 6th. You not know, attacking Liz Cheney. Focus on being nice. It's refreshing. Yes, no, no sleepy <laughs> Joes, no criticism. It's good. Just if, as Kay says, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. But it, it, one of the other problems that I, that I see going forward um, is that the redistricting has made uh, the seats more partisan. Democrats and Republicans both. Yeah. Uh, and that is going to make this even worse. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I am, I'll be interested to see if what Alice just said will come to fruition, if you actually will have people standing up to Trump. Even if you get through a primary, he still looms very large over the Republican Party and looms very large over the base. And so I think that because, the, especially in the House, because of the redistricting, because of how homogenous these districts are, I think it, there's an incentive definitely to align yourselves more with these Marjorie Taylor Greens and with the Donald Trump uh, view of the world. What do you think? Well, I, I think that we have a major problem as a country because, frankly, we used to have, what, 50-something, or we currently have 50-something districts that are basically swing districts. We're going to have something closer to 20 by the time this process is done. I mean, those are the people, you know, year in and year out that I covered Congress, those are the people that you went to to find out what the heck was actually going to happen in Congress. Were they actually going to get anything done? It was always on the shoulders of the moderate Democrats or the moderate Republicans, depending on who held the speakership. They were the people who governed. They were the people who had relationships on the other side. They were the people who had to be really serious about being a top-notch, uh, frankly, person, because running for a, a, an ele in a general election is really hard, and they were concerned about losing. And that brings out higher-quality candidates because it demands it. And so the fewer of those people that we have, the worse off we are in total. Yeah, they're going to be replaced by the gazpacho police. <laughs> Thanks one and all for being here.